My father came from the old country at 16. At one time, 400 men worked in New England quarries and 400 more worked in the Smith quarries. This was the industry in the area at the time. Westerly granite was the gold standard. There were several ethnic groups that worked here in the quarry industry. The Italians were here, the Irish were here. The Irish lived across the river in Donneville, and of course the Italian people were up north. Scottish people were along the side of this hill here. There was a boarding house on Tower Street near the water tower that the Finns tended to gather in and live in. It was like a melting pot community, and granite drew them here. Working in the granite industry was a tough life. Uh, especially to work in the winter time when it was cold. Uh, Power tools came in in the mid-90s, 1890s. So before then, anything that was done was quarried by muscle power. Working in a quarry was unbelievably hard work. There was a real hierarchy in workers, you know. And it's hard to tell from the uh, census records, oh, they they worked for the granite company. Well, this could mean they did anything from quarrying to blacksmithing to granite cutting to carving statues. There were all kinds of uh, people. There were polishers, there were turners, as I said, surface machine opera, hand cutting people. Letter cutters were a big thing way back before sandblast because all the letters had to be done individually, by hand, by a grand. When you look at the 1900 census records of Westerly, 57% of the population had a direct connection to the granite industry. It was a, a difficult profession, but it provided a, a living. We've documented monuments in 42 different states. It's in city squares, it's in cemeteries, it's on battlefields. It's just everywhere where people wanted to have a lasting monument to whatever it was they were commemorating. Ike and Dick, uh, you know, were the really last true uh, historians that touched the stone, that worked with the stone. When you see a monument and you see the beauty of it, well, how did it get there? Dick Camoli, he's really the last great carver uh, of Westerly. He's awesome. He is a man who loves granite. This was a beauty. This, this, this should be actually in a museum. It's too delicate. And that's what the people don't understand. You're subtracting. You can't add. When you're making a model, you can add clay and everything. And. Uh, that's like a painting. You can paint over, but this you can't. I think uh, granite and marble sculpturing are probably the hardest form of art to make myself. Once the Depression hit, and then of course World War II, it was kind of a double whammy for the granite industry in Westerly. And I remember it was very sad when, um, you know, back in 1956 that they, they had to sell it off. This was a huge industry in the town of Westerly. It is the, it is the engine of the economy for so many years here in Westerly. I think we need to preserve the history because like any history, Going back, um, we need to know the roots and where things came from. It was a big part of Westerly, and I think it's important that people don't forget that. That heritage is something that's shared by so many different ethnic groups here in Westerly, so many families, and, and to have it lost would be very sad.
everybody is proud of being a part of that granite story.